Hi, this is Justin Stroh, and today I'd like to talk about indulgences, probably one of the most widely misunderstood, or not even understood, teachings of the church. Um, often when you hear the word indulgences, you think about Martin Luther and you know his opposition to the church because of the selling of indulgences, and we often think, well, maybe the church doesn't teach that anymore, or maybe the church was completely in error in this area because of these sins that were being committed by church leaders back then. But in fact, uh, the church still teaches and believes in indulgences and has for 2,000 years and always will because it fits with reality. Just because somebody was abusing them doesn't mean they, they're not real. Um, so what is an indulgence? An indulgence basically is the remission for uh, the temporary punishment due for sin. So uh, if in this life I've committed sins, which is the only life I've got, but if I commit sins, then I need to repair for those uh, the damages done. And I can do that in this world. If I die, forgiven for my sins, but haven't spent any time repairing uh, for those sins, doing penance, then uh, the Lord gives the grace of purgatory. And if you want to learn more about purgatory, check out my video. It's called Get That Soul. It's a song about purgatory, and I give a little teaching there. there are two different types of indulgences. One is a plenary, and one's a partial. just that partial, um, not plenary. So is it 50%, 20, uh, I don't, 70? I don't know, it's between the soul and God and the church isn't really uh, going to get into those kind of things. But we're concerned about giving tools to you and me to be able to um, become saints. That's the goal. That's the goal of indulgence, is to become saints. So, we need to be about receiving plenary indulgences. This is how you do it. Find a prescribed prescribed act. So, for example, uh, a holy hour at the Adoration Chapel, reading scripture for a half hour, uh, uh, praying the rosary, five decades of the rosary in community. These are all prescribed acts. You can get the handbook that shows you all of the different partial and plenary uh, indulgences. Now, you also need to have some other things in place. Number one, you need to be uh, detached from all venial sin. In other words, I don't desire sin at all. That needs to be the disposition of my heart. I don't want to sin. I, my desire is for God above everything. And a venial sin, or I, I need to be in a state of grace, too. So I need to have gone to confession 20 days before or after. I need to receive communion on the day that I'm performing the prescribed act. And I need to pray for the Holy Father, because I, I'm in union with the church. And when I sin, I, I somehow not only offend God, but I offend the church, and I, and I hurt the church. So. When I pray for the Holy Father, it's a way of recognizing that. It's a way of uh, doing a simple act that uh, contributes to the building up of the body of Christ. So, I'm going to do another video on confession where we'll learn more about what, how to put a confession but also, and also the importance of it in the place of indulgences. But we need to be in a state of grace, folks. A state of grace means that I am not, I haven't committed uh, a grave sin. So, in other words, if I have committed a grave sin, in other words, a sin that breaks the commandments and the, the, the if you don't know the commandments, you can Google Ten Commandments and find them and read all about it. Or better yet, Google Examination of Conscience um, or uh, email me and I can send you a great one. Uh, and uh, we are we're called to examine our conscience to find out where it is we have grave sin and surrender that over to God. Now, if I'm, if I'm aware that, I, that I've committed a grave sin, I chose it anyway and I knew it was grave. And that's what we call mortal sin. And uh, a mortal sin uh, actually cuts us off from the sanctifying grace completely. And if we die in the state of mortal sin, then the radical possibility of our free will is the choice of hell. So, not a good thing. So we want to confess our grave sins, our mortal sins, uh, immediately. Don't ever uh, put that off. But in this case where we're talking about indulgences, it's necessary because we need to be in a state of grace because otherwise we're obviously still attached to something that's sent. So, um, that's a quick overview of indulgences. You can Google this um, or email me and I can send you a little pamphlet on it or go to uh, Catholic Answers, which is Catholic.com and uh, look up indulgences there. Lots of great explanations. Um, but as Catholics, let's go about receiving indulgences. By the way, you can receive an indulgence under an indulgence Apply them to other souls here on earth, but we can.
can apply them to our own um, and for the souls in purgatory. And I recommend uh, like twice a month receive a plenary indulgence. One for yourself and one for the souls in purgatory. And I just surrender it up to the Lord and say, Lord, for the soul most in need of your mercy, that's the lowest place of purgatory, I ask you to release that person. Uh, and, um, and I believe the Lord hears our prayers. So this is a great uh, privilege that we get to participate with God in the salvation of souls here and now in this world through our efforts of evangelization and also uh, in the uh, world after this, uh, which includes purgatory. So again, if you're confused about purgatory, check out my other video. God bless you. And uh, check out my website, which is on the uh, left of this featured video, if it's still featured. If not, it's, you can go to my Twitter account, which is Justin Stroh. Twitter and it's there as well. So peace be with you.